Hey there, this is One Boom, and Modern Warfare 2 gets very heavily criticized, and for the most part, I get it. Modern Warfare 2 is not meeting expectations, and that's fine, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about you. Let's make you the problem for a second. If you're one of those people out there that owns the game, wants to play the game, wants to enjoy themselves playing the game, this video is about you. This video is for you. This video is to make the game a little bit more fun for those of you trying to have it. So anyway, first things first, I would recommend if you are struggling with your matchmaking to disable crossplay. If you're on PlayStation or Xbox, turning off crossplay, I have a whole video about turning off crossplay on Xbox. It's a little bit more complicated there. But turning off crossplay and playing with, you know, other controller users or primarily controller users on the same platform as you is a lot better. And also skill-based matchmaking has a harder time pairing you with either bad teammates or against good enemies. So turn off crossplay. That's the number one thing I would say. The next thing is get creative. Uh, I think a lot of people are getting a little too stuck in their perk packages that they're using, like Battle Hardened, Bomb Squad, and then Fast Hands and Ghost or Quick Fakes is what I'm seeing most of the time. But what I'd recommend is doing what I do. I, I, I don't normally recommend that because it's usually not that good, but making different perk packages for different play styles or to achieve different things can be kind of a lot of fun. Building a class for stealth or versatility, going on streaks, playing objectives, it can all be really rewarding and I feel bad for the people that just aren't doing it. Running a smoke grenade with double tack grenade and strong arm and then quick fix and fast hands and then playing on objectives like that can be really good. Like even Survivor, which is sort of a gimmick perk because it's just bad last stand, you can use that in conjunction with a deployable shield and that deployable shield is gonna keep you covered. So if you're gonna go for mounting kills, run Survivor. When they take you off your head glitch, you'll be behind cover and you can revive yourself and remount the wall. Now when it comes to stealth play, it's really annoying if the enemy has a UAV up and you fire a suppressed weapon, it'll still disable your ghost perk. I don't know why, hopefully this changes soon, and hopefully this part of the video will be irrelevant sooner than later, but there's a really easy way to fix this. On any of your stealth loadouts with a suppressor, run armor-piercing ammunition so you can quickly look up to the sky, shoot down UAVs and counter UAVs, and keep moving. UAVs are immensely powerful. If you hear enemy UAV inbound before the first minute of the game is over, somebody's doing a little too well and is gaining momentum that might lose you the game down the line. So I would recommend, if you want to play with a stealth build, always run armor-piercing rounds in your stealth builds. The next thing is people being scared of recoil. I think a lot of people are building their weapons to be more competitive, low recoil, just, you know, immensely accurate. And yeah, that makes some sense, but not always the best option in my experience. I started to fear recoil in this game a little bit less and fear idle sway a little bit less and I was able to make much more versatile snappy builds. When the game came out, I was using longer barrels, thicker stocks, under barrels and muzzle attachments. And now I find that a lot of these assault rifles are really damn versatile with just one good muzzle attachment. If you want to learn more about muzzle attachments, I'd recommend watching channels like Exclusive Ace who has broken down all of them or go to Simthic.gg and just play with the class creation tool they have there and figure out what is going to make your gun the most accurate with the least amount of weight. The reason I believe my TAC-56 build is so overpowered is not only the TAC-56 is overpowered, it's that I have pretty much zero recoil, clean iron sights, and an incredible aim down sight speed. If you're really scared of idle sway and you're really scared of recoil, you're not going to build aim walking movement weapons. You're not going to build good, snappy, versatile weapons that feel a little bit more like traditional COD games when you would equip like quick draw and stalker or just a stock attachment. So I recommend worrying a little bit less about recoil and trying to make a build that's balanced. That way you're going to be more versatile and you're going to end up not needing to control your engagements quite as much. My next point is also about weapons and it's that I think some people are sleeping on the cooler optics in this game and that's a travesty. The optic work in this game is beautiful. Like high zoom optics don't cause that much visual recoil on most guns that I've used and the hybrid optics are something else. And if you are having trouble winning gunfights or if you just want a nice change of pace, I would highly recommend throwing on some of the more unique optics because they're gonna help you more than they hurt you if you build your gun properly. If you play with a high affected FOV and you're usually running iron sights or red dots, you might find that for your playstyle, 
a slightly higher zoom optic is going to help you make those targets in the distance a little bit bigger and so you can do your follow-up shots a lot easier. There are times that I get really confident with the weapon's iron sights and mobility and I just get the muscle memory down of just using my controller and aim assist and everything, but then sometimes I'll watch back my gameplay and I realize, oh, I lost that gunfight because I didn't see, you know, just how much around the corner he was. I couldn't see, you know, that I was hitting his arm because my iron sight was shaking around so much. And I think just using an optic would clear up that sight picture a bit more and give me a little bit of an easier time taking him out. And last but not least, this one's a little weird, but every little bit counts. I I've been seeing some people completely discounting things like optics or suppressors because they don't help you enough. And to be fair, that's fair. But sometimes just cutting down the, the visual and audio profile of your weapon when you're firing it can make it a little bit harder to detect you. When you use a suppressor, it makes it a little hard to pinpoint where you're shooting from. And if somebody's using their compass a lot, then you're gonna throw them off by using a suppressor. If you use tracker, then you're going to not show people the little, you know, red skulls above their dead teammates. So that can also become very, very handy. I mean, every little bit helps when it comes to building a stealth loadout. And optics can just make that slight difference in a mid to long range gunfight that allows you to be that much more precise than the enemy was. While they're battling visual recoil and muzzle flash, if you have a suppressed gun with a high zoom optic, you're just, you know, putting a dot on them and keeping that dot centered and you have a very, very low visual profile when you're firing and it's just a much easier gunfight for you. So if you're a more conservative player, don't be afraid to use a suppressor because they're not as good in this game or an optic because that's not what pro players use. I would highly recommend playing around with the optics and suppressors and stuff like the tracker perk because again, like has always been the case with Call of Duty, every little bit helps. Call of Duty is a game of millimeters and milliseconds. So if you can buy yourself a few milliseconds of not being detected, or if you can be just a couple millimeters more accurate in a mid-range gunfight, you're gonna have a little bit better performance overall. Like you really might enjoy fast hands and quick fix because they're really good at winning gunfights and being aggressive, but if somebody on the enemy team is using a higher sensitivity combined with high alert, you're gonna wish you had a perk set up with cold blooded. I guess the only tips I'm giving you is get out of your rut experiment with new things, and then also run armor piercing rounds in your stealth classes. That's really pretty much it. Because when it comes to competitive FPS games and finding your fun, it's gonna be very subjective and it's gonna be a very turbulent experience. FPS games are a bit paradoxical in the fun department because for every person having fun, there's somebody that's not having fun because they're losing and they're getting pushed into their spawn and not able to go on kill streaks and it's not a very good time. So. Don't expect to have any instant just path to fun other than trying your best and min-maxing in the areas that appeal to you as a player and as a person. Anyway, uh, all of this aside, just experiment and uh, see you when I see you. Goodbye. <laughs>